Dylan is not taking AV Ultimo's advice right now. I wonder, I also wonder, I mean, there's no rules against these players watching these streams. They obviously shouldn't be watching the stream for the match they're playing. We've got a pretty healthy delay on, so it wouldn't matter really anyways. But, uh, I mean, there's no really restriction to see for the gentleman to kind of watch what Mishi has been doing in these games. At any rate, hopping into this first game, Mishi spawning in the north, his opponent, the gentleman, spawning on the right-hand side. Um... Yeah, so standard stuff so far. The gentleman not opting for moles or anything really particularly defensive against it. Looks like he's kind of going for the strategy we've seen him play in previous games so far this tournament. Uh, we'll see if he ends up getting getting some ferrets. He's definitely got a pretty lucky little campfire spawn uh, that should be pretty easy to hold if the game ends up going a little bit longer. Um, whereas the only other campfire on the map is kind of tucked away on the left-hand side. Uh, kind of one of those spots where... It's not really good for any kind of cheesy play, but we might see me take it as a as a ninja campfire. Um, sometimes it's good just to snag those and hope that your opponent never notices them. This is a fairly okay map again for Gentleman. He's got water surrounding his map. It's um, not swampy as the other games we've seen him play, but his ferrets could prove useful for these battles that take place across the water. I, yeah, I think the Gentleman's kind of like getting some getting some nice the the rng gods are smiling upon him because he's <laughs> definitely getting uh really good spawns for this ferret play if he decides to go for it the trick is definitely going to be uh you gotta win with you gotta survive the storm of moles that mishi will probably be bringing because i think moles being in your deck at all previously i guess in that strawberry series tournament every time a player took moles they built them but sometimes sometimes you'll take something in your deck that you don't really always build but in this case it looks like Mishi's gonna just kind of go up to this squirrel falcon mole push that he did uh against Arbuzz in that last game and so I'm pretty nervous for the gentleman it looks like that's pretty darn hard to hold especially with what he's bringing along with him yeah I think the lizards really help in that type of engagement uh to not only tank but also to apply a little bit more dps um so without that the falcons would do quite well against the squishy squirrels and we see the gentleman grabbing some uh, chameleons. I guess he's hoping for some tank from them, but I guess we'll see how the engagement goes. Yeah, I wonder, I wish I could do the math really quickly in my head, because chame chameleons have like, do they have 35 health? They have 30 something health. Um, yeah, I think and, you're right, it is 35. Yeah, so I'm trying, to do, I'm trying to do the math in my head in terms of investment. He's investing 120 food plus an additional 60. So he's investing 180 food into X amount of health against the amount of moles that Mishi's about to throw down, which is going to be three moles. Uh, unfortunately, Arba's... I would like Arba's, to point out the timing saying. is 2 minutes 40 seconds for those still competing. Uh, keep that timing in your head. 2 minutes 40 is when it seems yeah. like Mishi pushes out to do it. Yeah, and the gentleman here is indeed going to be hard-pressed to survive this. I can't even like see the moles right now. Looks like they fell pretty early. Uh, he is going to hold this, I think. Well, yes! That. All right! That was that was excellent. I mean, I'm like, so I'm I'm a big fan of Mishi. He 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 submits replays all the time to Tooth and Tail TV, and we love to stream his games. I'm not a big fan of moles, and so I like to see. I like that we just saw that. So the gentleman putting putting the the squirrel army to work and holding off that mole push from Mishi, which is going to put him into a pretty good position. Yeah, those chameleons did exactly what he needed to. He was countering the tankiness of the moles with the tankiness of his own tier two. So it just out-tanked, pretty much. And now the gentleman is ahead in army because Mishi invested so much into the mole. But now he's on the back foot. And man, if we get a second at the end of this game, we got us that army graph is insane around that mole point. It shows what a big investment a kind of all-play moles are. But sure enough, uh, the gentleman probably getting a little bit overconfident and this, this uh, kind of secondary defensive mole hold from Mishi is going to put kind of undo some of the advantage that he had just built up. He's going to lose... He's going to lose most everything he had right there. And Mishi's just kind of constantly reinforcing his his army with moles as he pushes across the map. The gentleman, uh, I I think I'd like to see him just pull back. He's got to just sacrifice this Gristmill because these units coming in one at a time are not going to be able to do it, cut it against this uh, tanky mole and high DPS army that she's putting together. Yeah, I just realized that he lost his action, his chameleon, chameleon warren, warren in that first engagement, so he didn't have those for the fight here, which may have been a mistake. 
Yeah, I wonder why he sold those. I guess he just wanted to push for some extra squirrels. I was too excited by the uh, the back and forth that I didn't really see the the, the decision making process there. But sure enough, the gentleman's gonna nice. He's gonna get that one last falcon. That's gonna be really great for him uh, because these these expensive tier two units being sixty food apiece definitely start to hurt. And we are about to hit that five minute mark. So these players are gonna hit a low econ game in two one. Right now, all those farms are gone. They're down four farms to four, and players are going to have to decide what to do. So Mishi opting to see if he can hold this expansion while the gentleman is sitting pretty well on 15 squirrels and six pigeons. Yeah, I don't know if he lost it or sold it, but it sucks they didn't have it. But it's interesting what we're seeing here. It's like these players are pretty much equal in these engagements, and as soon as Mishi loses that um, mole uh, advantage, uh, the gentleman just starts winning the fights. And Mishi can't reinforce moles automatically, so he has to keep investing into that mole play. So I think as long as the gentleman keeps up in terms of army value, mole to army, he can just eke out Mishi continually. Because now I think he, you're Mishi's right. down in that, that Warren count. Yeah, these moles are kind of serving this purpose of being like... Because since they have so much health, they're essentially like you know, four or five squirrels bundled into one single unit. So it's like once you kill one mole, it's a big swing in terms of how the battle is going. Because it's like that that health is gone and they don't reinforce and, and everything else you just said. And so uh, I, that is what we seem to be seeing here. So uh, the gentleman's going to try to push Ooh. in. His two falcons uh, losing his commander. If Mishu decides to engage right here, could be a bad, bad fight for him. Because unmicroed armies, you see all those squirrels just not doing anything. And luckily, Mishi didn't capitalize on it too bad, and the gentleman was able to spawn and kind of pull them back. But it just kind of shows you, like, losing your commander sometimes can be a very risky thing. He's going to engage here and fight across these warrens. Uh, mm. I don't think this fight's going quite as well for him. This, that warren just doing its... It's like, Mishi just loves having something to tank. As long as he got something to tank, then uh, the fight might go well in his favor. Yeah, I didn't like that engagement there. The gentleman would have been way better off um, just going off the advantage he had but now he lost those units now he's behind in eco he really should have used that time to build more farms instead of doing that attack and now he's behind i agree because now it's he's kind of showing a uh, sort of i don't want i don't know if it's indecisiveness but he's like kind of unsure what to do because he knows that he can't attack trying to get farms but he's already a little bit behind on that on that farm count so um if Mishi capitalizes it and decides to move in because he sees what the gentleman's doing it's going to be a bit of a tough hold for him but for now I mean, the more time goes on, the more this economic advantage or disadvantage is just going to kind of even out. The gentleman here posturing around this crisp mill, probably going for another expansion, and he's going to extend this game out. Hmm. If the gentleman wasn't so behind right now, I would definitely suggest that he would try to do some kind of, like, wraparound attack, because right now Mishi is sitting at three Warren's worth of units on the gentleman's uh, six. So attacking from the correct direction here could mean a win, but I don't think he's in a position to do that, unfortunately. I don't think so either. And these, uh, I, I like seeing kind of pigeons because I'm still not sure where pigeons fall in the in the new meta. I personally still think they're pretty pretty cool units, but they do seem to have kind of lost some of their edge uh, in the recent patch. They lost one more health, which means they're two shot by squirrels. So that's a really big deal, and they lost one range, which is also a big deal. So you can't get these these invinci invincible pigeon flocks that keep units alive forever. And so um, we're seeing them not be played as much, but at the same time, both these players have them in their decks. Yeah, I think that re reduction in range really affected them more than people think, because now the pigeons aren't as clutch as they were. They have to travel that extra tile, and in a game such as this, that extra movement could mean the death of you know any type of unit. So I think that extra range reduction uh, really meant a lot. Yeah, the timings get real tight in this game. So the gentleman, I mean, Mishi kind of kind of sat back. I'm not sure if Mishi had a very strong advantage to to necessarily push with, but kind of by sitting back now, uh, the gentleman's sitting at essentially 10 farms because he has that campfire, uh, two campfires. So he's at 11 farms now to the eight of Mishi. And so uh, Mishi uh, sniffs that out and he throws down six moles now and he's going to try to pretty much end it right here. If he's not able to make something happen and if the gentleman holds this fight, uh, the gentleman is way out of position. Yeah, there's, he was scouting during that time. He, yeah, I was going to say, I couldn't even find him. He was way out of position and as, as that battle, the gentleman lost the higher army and probably therefore the game now at this point. Um, what a tough but well-timed attack coming out from Mishi. Just shows that I, I guess it's it's cool that moles are useful at all points of the game. I, it'll just come up. It'll come down to whether or not they're too useful at all points of the game. Because how often do you see that many 
moles late in the game. So at the army graph, I don't know if it's still on the screen, but we see at the three minute mark, Mishi really went up in army value and lost everything. So the gentleman was kind of at a huge, huge advantage right there. And then at the nine minute mark, that other explosion of army value definitely was enough to uh, take out the gentleman in that game one. Uh, I think the nail in the coffin for the gentleman there was the overcommittal to tier two because uh, right around the time Mishi decided to go for that timing attack with the moles, he put down two tier two worms of snakes, and uh, there wasn't any, uh, there wasn't enough time for him to get those out. If he had instead gone for the more um, quicker play by getting tier tier one out, he might have been able to hold it. So it's just, yeah, just just a good timing attack by Mishi, pretty much. Yeah, it really was, and I think I've, Mishi even saw those tier two warrants, so that wasn't even like a coincidental timing. I think Mishi very much understood uh, that. I think he very much understood the situation. He saw that the gentleman had that expansion. He might have gotten the feeling that he was behind based on those campfires, and so uh, it was just good decision making. It wasn't even like you know there there wasn't really any luck involved there. That was just a well timed attack coming out of Mishi that ended the game. <laughs> So we're going to head into game number two here shortly once Mishi readies up. Uh, this is, this pretty much, these guys are fighting for essentially a guaranteed qualifier spot. Uh, whichever player moves on from this match in the winning position is is guaranteed to, to move into the uh, round of eight coming up next weekend in the Vital Oktoberfest. So as a quick review, in case we have any new viewers moving in, uh, this is a Swiss qualifier. Each player plays uh, best of best of three across five rounds, uh, being matched against someone who is performing similarly to them in the bracket. And whoever wins the most games overall, the top four players will move on. So going into this next game, Mishi going for the same deck. I don't even remember what tier three unit Mishi was taking because he's kind of <laughs> focusing on these early game things anyway. So I'm not sure if the Badger was what he had last time, but uh, he's indeed going to stick with a very similar composition the gentleman here agonizing over his last pick and he's gonna stick with this with the uh pigeons as well i think the to uh the lizards are a really great choice considering mishi is not even running toads yeah i think those lizards could pay off well and i think uh, lizards do more damage than squirrels so who knows if they get into an okay spot they might be they might be what's needed uh, against against these pushes, if you can get it's it's kind of based on positioning, because we saw in the game against Arbuzz that uh, he kind of tried to do that. He tried to circle his lizards around to get to the soft underbelly of Mishi's army, circling around the the tanky moles because moles only do one damage. So damage wise, they're not the scariest things in the world. The problem is that they just take so darn long to kill that it's hard to get around it. And so Arbuzz tried to do that. It didn't work out that well for him. We'll see if the gentleman is able to adapt and come up with something else in this game. I, I think his main option really is with those, pretty much with all the units he has, is to really try to not focus on those moles and try to get those shots into the units that matter. Uh, maybe the option. But we'll yeah, it's kind of practice. It's a little bit hard with the targeting because I think if, if I understand the way targeting generally works in this game is you can press the rally button which makes your units move towards you or attack something near you, and your units will attack the thing nearest where you pressed the button. And so oftentimes, if you're sitting in a defensive position at your base, that's going to be the moles because they're in the front line. So it's kind of, it's it's a little bit uh, of a difficult micro trick to be able to like run your commander past things to start targeting stuff behind the moles. So it's, I wonder if we'll see any kind of like micro evolution in the in the meta here in handling handling these early aggressive mole pushes. Hope so. Yeah, and so as you pointed out last time, it's about it's about two minutes and forty seconds or so that this first mole push comes out if Mishi elects to do that. So we'll see if he is gearing up for that. Uh, it appears it appears that he is. He's grabbing a campfire. I'm not sure if he has in previous games, so I'm not sure if that'll delay it by a little bit. But we've got about t minus forty seconds before before the the moles come in. Yeah, I think it will delay it a little bit. He usually doesn't grab the campfire, and he usually has a. Falcon Warren, go Warren going, but now he's going for more scrolls this time around, so maybe he's electing not to do the moles and playing a more upfront game, but we'll see. 
All right, being corrected in chat, moles still do two damage, which is yes. as much as a squirrel does, and oh. so, um, so yeah, that's I guess that that makes them a little bit scarier. That's that's twice as much damage as I thought they did. <laughs> so that oh that no, be... this is so good. He's pulling his army. Out. Yeah, he's pulling his army to try to defend the campfire, but then Mishi is pulling in to kill his warrens. This is beautiful. What kind of mind game was that? All right, I mean, even though I'm not a big fan of mole, sexy play. Throwing up a mole over by the campfire to draw Ooh. the gentleman's army away, but it's not going to totally pan out well because uh, Mishi only manages to get one warren for that in addition to the army uh, army killed. But losing two, losing a bunch of moles is is an okay trade. I mean, if we're checking out the army graph, yeah, the gentleman ends out in a slightly better position for that. So kind of uh, we're seeing a repeat of game one so far where the gentleman does manage to hold off that, that early two-minute, two to three-minute mm -hmm. mole push. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, Mishi started building the moles right in front of the gentleman's uh, squirrels and lizards, and the gentleman was already up in army at that point, so he lost about 30 to 40 food on the cell, so it wasn't too bad. Um, but yeah, he should have recognized that he was already losing the battle and probably not start those moles. Right, so the gentleman really doubling down, seeing how effective those chameleons were in the last game, and he's going to get up to four of them and hopefully keep them this time, because I think that really worked well. And I, this is I, I'm I'm liking the adjustments that we're seeing out of the gentleman because uh, kind of something that I heard Andy Schatz say, uh, the CEO of Pocket Watch Games, say in one of the other balance, balance streams that they kind of do is he he would really like the game to be in a place where if you know what the other player is going to do or if they do the same thing that they're they're going to lose or they're not going to it's going to be easy to it should be relatively easy to hold off uh, a stale strategy and so we're going to see if the gentleman. Has has figured that out because the Mishi was Mishi's been going with something that has worked so far in every game that he's played. Uh, the gentleman's going to move in for an early aggressive push here. He's got these chameleons up front tanking things. Mishi did not have time to put down any moles. Uh, I don't think he was banking any food necessarily. And the gentleman is definitely going to be overwhelming on this fight. Uh, let's see if he can get that falcon. That would be a nice little pickoff. Right now that mill take tanking tons of damage. He takes out that falcon. Takes out the army of Mishi. He takes out this grist mill, and he might be taking the game off the back of this push. Uh, and you asked if he was saving up food to potentially do some moles, and he was. By the time the attack came, Mishi was sitting about 180 to 200 food, so I think he was gearing up for a mole attack, but I don't know if the gentleman knew, but he came in just as that uh, uh, food ticker hit 200, and now he's looking to just take the game. That was, that was an amazing adjustment coming out of the gentleman, and that was really cool to see he went, I think... I don't know if he timed it in the same way that Mishi did in the previous game, because I don't think he knew how much food Mishi had or how many moles, but he went the second that fourth chameleon was in his army, and he just decided to push right across that time. And I, I'm i going to assume it's because he saw how effective the later mole pushes came from Mishi, like just this constant ebb and 